Hello, my name is Greg George, and today I want to do a demonstration of hard probe reverse engineering um, inside of DesignX. Um, so many devices, these portable CMMs, come with lasers on them, but we often get questions on how to use the probe to do reverse engineering things. Um, so my intention today is just to give like a basic overview of how that would work inside of DesignX. So to start out, you're going to toggle over to this Live Capture tab. And in there, select the device that you want to connect to, connect it, and get it running. And then we're going to be focusing on these tools right here. And um, we'll go through them. So the first thing you need to know is hard probing geometry, whether it's probed surface, sketches, solids, or reference geometry, if you probe them, in position they're not able to be aligned later now there are some exceptions with surface bodies and solid bodies you can transform them um, but in general trying to align them later can be challenging or impossible depending on what the geometry is so the idea is you generally need to align ahead of time and that way capture the data in position um, in its aligned state. Um, so today I'm going to use the Live Align. Now, when you go into a Live Align, you can best fit to other geometry that's already there. So if you had some sort of model already as a reference, you could best fit to that. But I would say most of the time, you're going to be doing a datum alignment. Now you see I need to select geometry in the graphics window in order to create an alignment. So Right now, I only have three planes, so I'm kind of constrained to only aligning with three separate planes or what you would call a 3 2 1 alignment. Now, if you wanted to do a more elaborate alignment, all you would have to do is before you enter the Live Align tool, you could create some reference geometry and or sketch in CAD geometry as an option to align to. So one example of what I mean there is, there are instances where I might wanna align a radial part, you know, a part that is a circular pattern. In those cases, you could create a reference axis here and then create some reference geometry in the graphics window. And then when you come in, you can select those pieces of geometry in here and then probe the same ones on the part. Um, so that's just a brief explanation that there are advanced, more advanced alignment methods possible, but I'm going to be using one of the most basic ones today. Um, so I'm going to select the top plane, and just like on my part, I'm going to probe the top plane, I'm going to probe the back plane, and then the side plane. And then I'm going to say that I want to probe them and fit them here. Now when I hit the OK checkbox, I'll grab the arm. I'll exercise it to make sure that I can go ahead and uh, probe now. So again, I'll just probe them in the same order. Now I'll probe that back plane. And the side. So you'll see that I'm probing and then I hit the back button or red button um, to capture that. Now if I back out, you'll see I have the option to just accept what I did, retry or even reconfigure the tool and run it again. So now I'm aligned. And if I want to check my alignment, you'll see that it captured the three planes that I uh, matched up to those default planes, but I can come over to probe location and move my probe to where I established zero. And you can actually even click and capture points. And it will give you the readings based on the origin. So X, Y, and Z locations based on those locations respect to that origin. So from now on, the next step is to go ahead and live model and use live geometry. But before I do that, I'm just gonna go in and scan the part. That way you can visually see on screen as I reverse engineer 
what it is that I'm reverse engineering. So just make it a little bit easier. There. So I'm not going to ca worry about capturing every bit of data. I'll just make sure that I scan enough that you can see. Hit OK. And then this always comes up. I can run a scan process, which is like a script. I can use Mesh Buildup Wizard, which will take all these separate scans and merge them into one and allow me to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, but for today's purposes, I'm just going to keep the data as is. And it's always good to save the file just to make sure that we got a good state. I got a place that I can go back to. All right, so now we're going to progress over to live model. What I'll do is I'll try to give some good examples of each type of object as I probe them. Um, some things may not be present on this part, so just depends on the, the type of geometry. So I'll start out with solid body spheres. So I have a sphere on this part, as you can see. If I come over and put the probe here, pull back and capture the sphere. So you can see that. Um, let's toggle over to cylinders. So you can see there's my cylinder. I'll do a couple of those. So this is just modeling solid CAD bodies as I uh, probe them. So you can see, let's try that cone here. And there's a decent cone there. Spheres, Torah. I don't have a Taurus on here, but that pretty much covers the basis for solid bodies. Now, if I come over to surface bodies, you'll see that I have some slightly different options here because then we can add in planes. Um, basically, the others, it's just a non-bounded version of the same thing. So if I'll go ahead and probe some planes, like the table here. Just like that. So the way DX works is the first point vector is the one that's going to compensate, uh, choose the compensation direction. Um, so that's how this works. If I probe from the other direction like this, that same plane, it will compensate the other direction. So there's my plane. Um, if I do cylinders, again with surfaces, it just does them as an extruded see an extruded surface instead of extruded solid. Um, cone spheres tori. So all the same different all the same options there for solid bodies. Now for sketches, this is where it gets a little bit different. With sketches, you can probe lines, rectangles, circles, points, and slots. Um, so in this instance, what we're going to do is that we're going to select base sketch. Uh, we're going to say create a new one. So that means I'm just going to probe one. I can also select geometry and select a plane that already exists, right? That's actually the better way to go about this. Um, so now if I just probe like the sides, you'll see that it creates a line, but with sketch entities, there's no compensation, right? At the moment, there's, it could be in the future that we add the compensation ability.
But for right now, the way it works is no compensation, which most of the time, you know the sphere size, so it's not a big deal to go inside of the sketch, trim those together, and then um, go ahead and um, compensate those. All right, so if we go over to rectangles, the way the, the way the rectangle works is actually the same idea here. I just probe everything at once. And you see that. And the rectangle compensates. So it it's just one of those things that some things work a certain way and so there's that. Now for circles, I'll go ahead and probe those um, circles right here. See that? Points in slots. So slots, we'll try to get this slot here. It's a little tight for this ball size. Yeah, let me try it one more time. But it is a it's a little small for that. I'll just hold the back button and remove all these points. There. All right. So let me try it one more time. There we go. So the reason why is this the the sphere size is a little big for that size, and it's a little difficult to get the compensation right when you pull to the middle. Um, so there are slots, and let me see if I missed anything. Points is the other thing. So points are interesting. I can basically best fit points. I need at least take some readings, and I can average them together. So if I click multiple points, it'll just average them, or I can just click once. So you see this is the, the table with a whole pattern so if i need to reference where all those are i can just put the probe right into the hole and capture it that way so there's sketches now for 3d sketches compensation off and you basically are just capturing points that it connects together with the spline so if Maybe if you put like a needle probe or something, you could trace something that way with the probe. But with a large sphere like I have, you would have to put it inside of a galley or like a, a like a something that would hold the sphere in place while I capture it. So it's not to me the most useful thing unless I switch out the probe for like a needle probe or something like that. Um, there's a few different methods that it could make sense so for live model that's kind of the overview of all the different categories of the information you can collect now for live geometry the difference is you're capturing reference geometry so reference planes so you see that i captured a reference plane instead um, reference vectors and the cool thing about this is you can extract them from cylinders you can extract just the vector so if i say from a cylinder and you see that there's a vector that we established and you see you have the different options in here from a cone cylinder fit without compensation all the different options for vectors polylines 
going back to that grid here on the I'll just collect some points and you'll see what I mean. It creates a polyline, so a multi-segmented line. And you can draw things out. And you can use those for center axes. There's all different things that you can use those reference polylines for. And at reference points, you need to capture at least three. And it will like best fit a reference point. Even if it's the same location, you can just... So you see the points that we captured before were in a sketch, a 3D sketch. These points are actually reference entities over in the tree. And you can see that you have average there and you can select all these different methods. Actually, you can from a circle, all these different things. You can create these after the fact, though. When I probe, I usually just capture the bare minimum of information that I need. And then I go back and create the stuff later rather than trying to do a lot of fancy stuff in the menu. So that's live geometry. So that's just a general overview of the hard probe reverse engineering tools here. So again, um, align ahead of time. Um, scan if you can. Uh, and then live model things as surfaces, solid sketches. And then live geometry is reference geometry. Um, so from here, I have enough information. I can reverse engineer this part if I just hide the scan data. You see that I have enough data. I got these sketches. I got these features here. Um, so I can model this part most of the way with what I've captured so far. But if I wanted to finish it out, I would just probe those holes on the side, all these different things. So that's the overview of reverse engineering uh, with probe data in DesignX.